The Build Show is on the road today, coming to you from sunny Cleveland, Ohio, where we're visiting the Tremco test facilities. Now, if you saw my video I made on their Secure Rock XOAir 430 system, these guys have partnered with USG to come up with an incredible system of both water and air proofing a commercial building. Now, this has been in development for several years now, and on the show today, we're going to go behind the scenes and show you all the tests that go into making a really superior product. Special treat on the build show today. We've traveled all the way to Cleveland, Ohio to visit the Tremco test facilities. And I'm actually here with Marcy Tyler. Marcy, you are a chemical engineer. Yes. You're the product manager for this Tremco and USG collaboration that you guys call Secure Rock XOAir 430. And you're also a patent holder on this system, right? Yes, that is correct. So we've got the smart girl in the room here to tell us all about it. So Marcy, tell us briefly an overview of this whole system. Now we've, we've done a video on this before at the job site, right. but for someone who hasn't seen that before, tell us about this 430 system. Okay, so if you're, if you're looking at a traditional install of an air barrier, you're going to do that in the, in the field, right? Mm -hmm. So this membrane here is something you're gonna roll or spray on. Yep. And so we saw early on the benefits of a fluid applied membrane, but we also saw the inconsisten inconsistencies of installing it in the field can provide, weather yep. delays, overspray, things like that. Um, inconsistent thickness. So we said, hey, what can we do to take what we feel is this superior performing product and apply it in a factory? So we remove those elements That's that awesome. are inconsistent. So uh, instead of, let's say, 230 that I've used at a job site before where my guys are installing it, these are four by eight sheets of fiberglass face gypsum panels already pre-applied and then once we install those, all we gotta do is detail the seams and we've got an air and watertight shell for yep. our commercial building. Exactly, if you've used Exoware 230 in the past, mm -hmm. this is called Exoware 430. So we just had to do some slight tweaks so we can apply it in a factory setting and we just changed the delivery method, right? Instead of in the field, it's That's in awesome. the factory. Now we had a lot of fun today. We went through six different tests yes. that you guys do on these. And a lot of these tests are the ones that we see on the spec sheets. You know, an architect, a builder, we see all these ASTM different tests. Walk me through a, a couple of those and talk to me about how we've tested them to show how these are holding out both air sure, and water. Sure, of course. So uh, the test we did today, we do we do some slight modifications to be real world. Mm -hmm. um, each of these tests were taken from different industries like the roofing industry, coatings, textiles. So the first one was nail sealability. So mm -hmm. what you're essentially doing is penetrating the membrane with a smooth roofing nail. So typically it's done smooth roofing nail through your membrane as a free film applied on plywood. Mm -hmm. In our case, we modified it. So it's our 430 membrane applied to the Secure Rock gypsum. And then we're penetrating it with the screws or the threaded fasteners that yep. you're gonna use on your project. And then you're actually backing it out a little bit too, right? Yes, yeah, so, and, and we're going into the stud as well. Yeah. So we'll do it with a smooth roofing nail to kind of benchmark it, which is what everyone seems to do in the industry. And then we take it real world, by actually testing the facade anchors and fasteners and screws that you have on your project. We will do that as a service. That's awesome, because you know, that's the question I always get is no matter how good your membrane is, what happens when you poke all these holes through it? So we're actually able to show how this fluid applied membrane is sealing around those fasteners, whether it's a screw, whether it's a nail. Yep, exactly. Very impressive test. Exactly. All right, number two, this test now was the hydrostatic head test. Tell me about that one. Right, so in the nail sealability test, you are putting a hydrostatic head on there as well, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got your head of water. So this is another one that isolates the surface area and you go 55 centimeters and you're doing, you're supposed to test it as a free film. Mm -hmm. So now you'll know if it's a free film, if water makes its way through, you're gonna visually see that difference. In this case, we've applied our membrane already onto sheathing. So to know if it's making its way through the membrane, we actually put some dye into the water and then we look at it under black light to see if any water's making its way through uh, and it did not. So we awesome. are d making sure you have a visual inspection and then we're taking it one step further to make sure that there is, there has not been any absorption at all into yeah, the board. That's awesome. And not all your competitors have an actual membrane too. So that's that's a really big differentiator between you and some of the competitors out there. Tell me about the D412 test. Sure, so that's like the next step of what, what we're doing when we look at material tests. So now we're going to test it in the Instron. We cut out a dog bone of the actual membrane itself. We uh, apply it into the Instron and then there's a different amount of, there's forces that are put on the membrane. So you're gonna get a tensile strength and an elongation that's representative of that particular material you're testing. You wanna see some strength in your membrane so that it can hold up from a durability perspective, but you also wanna see some level of elongation. Yeah. So if the board behind it breaks, 
um, you're going to have that membrane stay intact, so it's strong yeah. enough. But yeah. then if a fastener is penetrating through it, that elongation is also going to help that uh, get that gasketing effect that you want to see around the fasteners when they're penetrating. Yeah, and remember, these, these are going to be applied to buildings that are going to be lasting for decades, so we may have some slight building movement. We want that membrane to be able to flex and move exactly. on the outside of the building and not break yeah. and let the air or the water yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so next was the E96 test, right? Sure. Yeah, we like to talk about the E96 from the perspective of from an air barrier in the air barrier world, some are allowing vapor to pass through and some do not or, or restrict it in yep. some way. So you want to know how quickly is vapor going to pass through a membrane. And that's when we do the ASTM E96. We discovered early on that there's a lot of error that can occur during that test method. And understanding that level of performance is so critical when a design professional is choosing his product. He wants to know whether vapor is going to pass through and at what rate. Yep. So we invested in these perm testers that we actually have here on this very sturdy table. We want to make sure that that there's no vibrations that are going to affect that measuring. Membranes are cut in the, they're applied in the thickness, they're cut out, put into those special cups, sealed very well, and then placed into this machine, and then they're measured every 30 minutes yep. throughout that test so that we know exactly when that water vapor is going to transfer from one side of the cup to the other. And ultimately, you've got a vapor open membrane, right? So if we're building a, a building in Chicago, let's say, in the wintertime, we want to be able to let moisture dry through the membrane to the outside. And so you've got that vapor open system compared to some that might be vapor closed. Exactly, yep. All right, next test was the uh, Ghostbusters test, as I like to call it. Tell me about that bubble gun test. So the, so the bubble gun test is part of ASTM E 1186. So our previous tests we talked about were lab scale testing, right, mm -hmm. material testing. We did include some accessories in some of them as well, but now we're going out into the field. So yep. typically this bubble gun or ASTM 11, 1186 is how you can validate fasteners in the field, mm -hmm. right? So we may have done a can test with your fastener in yep. the lab prior to, now we can validate the install with the bubble gun test. Got it. Um, with that test, we want to make sure you're using the surfactant provided, you want to follow the instructions, and you want to do it several times to make sure you're not getting any errors, any, any error that might be caught within that mechanism gotcha. to give you a false reading. So basically, you're painting that fastener with some um, syrup that's going to bubble, right? and then you're, you're sucking a vacuum out of that bubble right. so that you can see if any air is leaking through and around those fasteners. Fasteners. And it was interesting to see, we did we did the test twice, once with your uh, Secure Rock XOR 430 system that was totally, uh, even at the highest vacuum pressures, totally tight and sealed. And then we did it a second time with one that we knew was going to leak so we could see what that looked like. And it's a very interesting test. We wanted to demonstrate for sure that ability of that membrane to gasket around the fastener, the yep. penetrating item. Yep. And Marcy, to culminate all the tests, tell me about your two-story test racks. Th this is uh, something we're so excited to have. The ability to go and do this two-story testing is something that really helps us understand our products and our systems and how they come together. So we have the ability to do two-story tests where you can do a roof connection, a variety of window connections, and then below grade as well. And the wall that you actually put in there, too, I thought was unique because you, you made that in a way that could actually be used in, let's say, let's say an earthquake zone where you had yes. some walls that were possibly movable and your connections were a silicon connection with your products connecting all that um, so that then that wall, if it did have movement, we were testing to see if it would still be air watertight, right? That, that's actually for a specific job that we have where seismic drift joint testing was something they weren't wanting to be validating. So we went ahead and looked at their designs and collaborated with USG and as well with the people on the project team to understand what we could do to validate our products. And so we wanted to make sure that we put hinges in there to really demonstrate movement in all different directions, right? Yeah, that's really cool. So that we could actually show that, that wall flexing and showing how that product, which in this case was the uh, Tremco Simple Seal and how well it's handling that movement and still going to stay air and water tight. So we do the movement tests through all the air leakage testing and then we validate it at the end with the water testing. That is awesome. Let's actually go and show some footage from that test wall. Sounds good. I really like this guys. At the Tremco facility they've got their own test wall and check this out. We've got a giant spray rack. We've got nozzles every one foot on center. This is spraying the equivalent of an eight inch rainstorm. The idea here is we've got a film of water running all the way down that SE430 membrane. And then behind there, they've got a vacuum being pulled. They've got some tubes that are actually sucking the air out of the back of this. Now the standard test doesn't have a whole lot of uh, load required by codes. Only about a 20 mile an hour wind worth of, of uh, pressure. But with this test rack in their facility, they can take this to failure and they can take it well over 100 miles an hour simulated by pushing that air from the back or pulling that air out of the back. 
and they're able to take this much, much further than what code requires. Now, code requires now two hours on this spray rack with about a 20 mile an hour wind, but having this in their facility and being able to test this SE430 system, taking it all the way to failure, means that you're able to verify that your air barrier, which of course is your waterproofing as well, is gonna be at least as good, if not better, than your curtain wall system. Curtain wall, that's your window system on, on a commercial building. That's the facade on the front of the building. So now we can ensure that the air barrier, which is the waterproofing, can do at least as well, if not better, when it comes to holding out water and air than the curtain wall system. Very impressive that they've got this here. And of course, it doesn't cost them anything to do it, so they can set all kinds of systems up. I think this is really cool about these guys compared to a lot of manufacturers out there that don't have this test facility in sight. Very impressive. Marcy, thank you so much for having me. You and the of rest course. of your building scientists here have some incredible stuff going on. And I love seeing all the testing that goes on. And frankly, I didn't realize how much was involved in this, in this testing and how much facility and research time you guys have put into this product. Guys, for more information on this system, go to securerockxoair.com. You're gonna see a bunch of information there. But let me just wrap up for you here. I think there's three things that really separate this system now that I've had time to see the testing, do a mock-up wall, and really think about their system. I think number one, speed and simplification. When you use their system, instead of field applying and the potential errors that come with field applying, you've got a four by eight sheet that comes straight from the factory with their fluid applied membrane on it. When that gets installed, the QC, the QA is really easy. We can tell that it's installed right which leads to predictable performance, which is what we want as a contractor, right? We wanna make sure that our buildings are gonna be airtight, which means they're gonna be energy efficient, and they're gonna be watertight, which means I'm not gonna have callbacks, I'm not gonna have problems for decades with that building that I built. And the last thing I wanna mention is between USG and Tremco, they've got an amazing network of reps out there. People like Ben, for me in Texas, who could actually come out and meet with me, do a mock-up wall, do training, show me how to really install the system correctly so I'm gonna get that performance that I'm looking for. Impressive system. Guys, big thanks to USG and Tremco for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.